Hey guys, Ken here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I want to talk about my layout. So this is my layout for Active Trader Pro. This is what I use for day trading, for intraday trading. Uh, but it may apply to anyone in whatever time frame you use. I've had a lot of inquiries lately. The people that ask me, hey, can you talk about your layout and why do you have things the way you do? So that's what this is gonna be about. Even if you're a veteran, there's gonna be some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that will uh, that'll hopefully help you and make your trading day a little bit easier. So let's jump right in. So there are five windows that everyone should have no matter uh, what they trade or how they trade. So the first window would be obviously a chart. Um, unless you're some kind of amazing uh, long-term investor, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have a chart. The next window you're gonna have is an orders window, that's this window down here. I'm gonna jump into um, the Active Trader Pro frame just to point out where some of these are. But this is the orders window, and you go into uh, trade and orders, you go down here orders, and you pop that up. And this can be set up a different way. You can move these columns around and that kind of thing. Mine's pretty minimal. Most of my trades are uh, day orders and that kind of thing. But you gotta have this because this is where you manage like your cancels if you want to cancel an open order. This is also where you can see your fills the fastest. There are other places that you'll get kind of a response after you get an order filled, but this is where you want to um, to, to manage that. Uh, one trick I've learned is go ahead and on the order time, make sure the reticule um, is pointing, I think it's up. Basically, what that'll do is if you have that sorted that way, the most recent events will appear at the top. So this is really important. Uh, you'll have an open order and you, I'll show you, we'll just place something here real quick. So here's a short of, of MU uh, at 55, right? It's open, it's way away from the market, but here it is, it popped right to the top. It's not hidden somewhere here. Um, and you wanna be able to manage these and cancel them right from here. So that's the orders window. The next window you should definitely have uh, is a directed trade window. And that's this window here. This has the level two and the times and sales. I mean, this is where the action at is, is really at. If you're not watching the chart, you should be watching price. Um, this is expandable. You can you know make it as, as tall as you want. You can change the font size. That's in the general settings and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this uh, near the end of the video and show you my exact settings for my directed trade keys. Um, uh, Jonathan asked me, he said, hey, can you show me those settings exactly? Um, so I'll, I'll come back to that. But I like to have this near the orders window because your eyes are usually here. They're either on the chart or on the orders window. You don't want to do uh, a lot of looking around and, and looking at different screens when you need to take action very quickly. So you can have a, a limit order out there. You're watching price. Maybe you want to cancel it. You, want to, you don't want to have to travel or have your eyes travel very far to do what you need to do. A lot of your time is gonna spend in, spent in these two spots. Uh, likewise, I have the chart really close too. I've had some different layouts. You can definitely run uh, multiple directed trade windows. You can have four, five, six. I've had, I think the most I've ever had up at once is five and I had them all linked to charts. So if you don't know, you can link different things together so that when you change one, they change in both spots. So this chart is linked to this directed trade window. So when I change it to Facebook on the chart, or any other stock that I may have looked at recently, it'll change it in directed trade. So just go up to the little corner to link tools and, and pick a group and the directed trade is set up to that same group, the orange group, and that's why they're linked together. Likewise, it'll behave the same way down here in directed trade. You can change it down here and it change, oops, sorry, I mistyped that. And it'll change the chart for you. So have those linked, it just makes life a lot easier. So for now, that's uh, the director trade window. We'll come back. I'll I'll, sh I'll save these settings for. Or I'll show these settings for John because you want to see what I had set up. So the next uh, window you want is is a positions window. So again, uh, I think this one is up in its accounts and then positions. The first one. So accounts positions. Have this. There's a lot of different settings here. I have it set for all accounts right now, and I don't have any open positions. Um, but what this shows you, this shows you what you have, what you're in right now, um, whether day, long term, what have you. This shows the positions in your account. So you want this up. As soon as you get your fill down here in the orders window, it's going to pop and populate in here too, and it's going to show you, you know, how many shares you got and all that stuff. So I get a lot of information here because it's faster. <clears throat> Um, but you want this pretty close to all this action too, so your eyes don't have to travel very far. There's no clicking or anything you really need to do up here. Let me flip this real quick and I will show you a column that you should have here once. 
All right, so what I did is I changed this to one of my accounts is the one I trade in the most. And the settings for the columns are different and you can manage those uh, up here. Add column, remove column, that kind of thing. But the reason I wanted to come back to this is, this is something that took a little experimentation to figure out, but unadjusted purchase price, use this column. Uh, use this selection for your price. What this shows you is when you buy, if, if you buy multiple lots, let's say you bought 100 shares at 25 and 100 shares at 25 and a half, this is the choice you want and it'll do your average for you. So it'll show you the position you have and the average price that you have, even if you have multiple lots. So that's really handy. Some of the other things don't work quite as right. There's basis in there and some other things. Unadjusted purchase price is what you want. So if you buy multiple lots, it'll calculate every time, it'll calculate so you'll know exactly how much you're in and at what exact price you're in. So that's pretty handy. The next window that you want is um, closed positions. So closed positions is up here. This is where you can set up and show your P&L for the day. And I've been trading Micron this morning and I haven't done very well. I took a loss right off uh, 10.05 or so and I've been grinding back. But moral of the story, this will show you uh, your closed P&L. So it's called closed positions. It's in the same spot. It's under accounts and then go to closed positions. And it has some different selections here too. You can look at year to date or month to date or last business day and all that stuff. But usually when I'm trading, I care about today. So this is what I've done today, not very exciting. <clears throat> but um, but that's a window you want. That way you can see your P&L uh, throughout the day. So as soon as your positions close, this will update, this will take you back to flat. This is a money market that Fidelity switches you in. And then it'll update your P&L up here so you'll know how you're doing for the day. Um, the next things you should probably have, uh, this is my preference, I like to keep an eye on the overall market. So I keep track of some of the major indices and things and some of the, the sectors. And I also keep track, depending on what I'm trading, I keep track of a group of stocks. So these are called watch lists. And you can go in here and play around with these in here. But you can create them and basically just type in symbols and add to them and you can choose what columns you want to show and all that kind of thing. For mine and why I have these the way I have them, um, SPY is really important to me. I, I'll show you the chart I have on that on a different screen in a second, but I watch that throughout the day and I, I trade with it or off it or look for divergences uh, if my stock isn't acting the way SPY is and that's a hint that maybe the stock's stronger or weaker. Uh, QQQs, it's just the NASDAQ uh, 100 ETF, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that's the actual average. Uh, that's the NASDAQ 100, the NDX. VIX, I don't really use that. I could probably delete that. I put that on in March when we were going through some crazy times. And uh, it's not really useful to me, at least. And these last two, these are the symbols for the uh, bank stock index and the semiconductor index. So when I'm trading Micron, I look at the semiconductor index, the NDX, because um, that's the NASDAQ 100, because Micron's part of those. And I also look at the SPIs. Um, one of the things that I have off screen that you haven't seen yet, um, that's probably the, the second most major thing is, I have this on a second screen, so I keep the spies up, and this is a one minute chart. Down here behind uh, where my video portrait is coming through, there is a five minute chart too. So if you're using my layout and you didn't have me on the screen there, there's kind of a bigger picture spy in the corner, just to remind me to think about kind of a little bit longer time frame sometimes, but I do watch this spy. So I have that on a second monitor in the middle. Um, one of the other things I'll mention is, uh, before I got a new PC, I did run Active Trader Pro on a refurbished Dell laptop. It was an i5, it was probably four years old, probably cost about 300 bucks, and it ran great. There was no video card on it or anything like that. It had integrated graphics, and it really ran pretty well. So you don't need a super top-end system. You don't need 12 monitors, and I wouldn't suggest that, especially if you're getting started out. Um, use some old monitors and play around and see what you really need. So just a couple other things that I use, I'll share that with you. I do have three monitors, like I said. The third monitor is really just personal apps and stuff like that. I have some friends on Slack that I keep, uh, I chat with during the day and that kind of thing. But I use TradingView to keep track of VWAP. So that's this, that was on a monitor off to the side. I don't like super micromanage this, I just wanna know where we are. Um, VWAP is calculated by Fidelity, but they don't have an indicator for it on the chart. So that's why I have Micron up here as well and the VWAP calculation to kind of remind me too. But I do have this on a screen. I also use focus music from YouTube, helps me concentrate. And the other things I look at or have up during the day I want access to from the web are, I use Finviz, I use Finviz a lot. 
Um, the reason being, I use this as an estimate for the relative volume. So the R vol for the stock that I'm trading. And this is, it lags, it lags the market. So we could update this right now for Micron. And if you go down here, um, Finviz is great for a lot of things, by the way. But the rel relative volume is 0.63. And right now it says the volume is 6 million. Uh, 92,000 so you can see it's about 400,000 behind so I don't know I think it runs about 10 minutes behind maybe 15 minutes I just look at it kind of hourly after 10 a.m. I look at it about 10 15 11 15 12 15 just to see what's going on with re relative volume it gives me kind of some clues on price action you know is this price action that's driven by institutions is there a lot of interest is the stock in play today or is it just a normal day or even a less than normal day so right now you can see all in all relative volume uh, up till this point in the day is is relatively low that has me tend to fade moves a little bit more the other thing i have up is market watch i don't really use this for news to trade off of um, I just like to keep track of the headlines in case something sneaks through that I, I don't uh, think about. I have my Trader View journal. Uh, you guys may have seen this in my last video, but sometimes I make notes in here throughout the day. Um, and I have Fidelity's uh, web app up too, just in case. That's really it. The one thing I don't do, um, if anyone's curious about it, is I don't uh, watch CNBC throughout the day anymore. I do do some pre-market kind of check on the news, uh, check on the president's schedule, check on... Um, the Federal Reserve's calendar. I use Forex Factory. I mentioned that in another video too. I look at all the um, market events or news events and that kind of thing. But with that, that's really my layout. You can pretty much do everything on one screen. Uh, like I said, I do float my windows. Um, that's so you, it's much easier. So I highly suggest doing that and get out, get outside of this Active Trader Pro frame. Um, anything you open up. Be, be save your charts liberally experiment don't be afraid to make a lot of settings and that kind of thing and just save them separately you might come back to them i have a ton of charts saved i probably need to clean this up um, but save them if you like something save it i suggest using tabs in your charts if i didn't say that already it'll save you some real estate if you're not going to really look at them all the time then have it you know i have a one minute a five minute and a daily that's pretty much all i look at uh, but put them in tabs and then save this. Um, your charts will save independently of your layout. So you can have a bunch of different chart settings that you like. Sorry. And your layout will save the chart that you have up at the time you saved your layout. So there's a lot of flexibility there. So last but not least, I wanted to show um, my settings for directed trade. I think it's in settings and go down to directed trade. And then this window pops up. So we're talking about these buttons I have set up over here. So people are really interested in these. I have a whole other video about this, but some of it was blurred out. But these are my actual settings because I generally, I either enter at the market or at, with a limit order. So I have a short at the offer, a short ask. This is a custom button and these are my exact settings. And again, there's a lot you can do in here. Don't be afraid to experiment. Let me go through these and I'll show you something else in the directed trade window. But this is my uh, setup for short at the ask. And this will, as soon as you uh, load this order and hit uh, submit, it'll go off of what the current ask is and I'll put a limit order out there for a thousand. I have buy to cover at the market. I have short at the market. Buy at the bid, it's kind of the, the brother of the short at the ask. It'll take that current bid and throw a limit order out there for a thousand. And then there's sell at the market and buy at the market. And you could only have six at one time. I wish you could have more. I would do a lot more with it. But those are kind of my main entry and exit positions. Don't be afraid to experiment around in here. There's a lot of settings that I don't use, like stop limit, trailing stop, and all that stuff. And it gives you a lot more um, things to enter. And if you're new, it might be confusing about how you want this to do. But basically here in this, you can do it by percentage. I thought you could do it. Uh, this is all dollar, I guess. But um, you can do above the bid, at the bid, below the bid. What you can do is you can set this up and play around with it because you don't have to have any fear. You, when, once you get something set up that you want to use, go to the director trade window. This is always a two-step process. You're not going to accidentally send out an order um, unless you hit place. So play around with it if you're unsure of, of your settings and hit the button that you set up. That's the first stage. That populates the ticket, but it's not going to send anything. It doesn't send anything out to the market to you at place. 
It's always a two-step thing. So don't be afraid to play around and make sure your settings are right. I do it all the time. I'm paranoid. Sometimes I'll go down to a smaller share size and I'll forget to set my settings back to a thousand maybe in the morning. So I go through and I click all my buttons and I look at them real quick and just make sure they're set the way I want to. So I hope that helps for those that were interested in that. But that's really it. That's all I've got for you. That's my layout and, and the reason I have it that way. These are the things that I look at. Kind of use this as an overall market view and what other things are doing. These are the main windows for information. The one thing you can do, some of these windows don't shrink all the way down. I'll show you what I mean. So this, for example, is the positions window and I've got it switched to all accounts. More of the story at this resolution and with the settings for the fonts and stuff I have, this is as small as this window will go on the screen. It won't, the width will decrease, but it won't go vertically any smaller. So what you can do if you float your windows and you experiment, you can definitely save some real estate. So I've done that. I only need a line or two out of some of these. Same thing with closed positions. This is as small as it'll go, unfortunately, at this resolution and with these uh, font settings, and those are all in the general settings. So I layer them. So I take these in, uh, these watch lists up here. I layer it over the top of this because I really only care about literally this one line. And same thing here. I can layer it over the top of some of the junk up here. I don't really need all of this in my face. Likewise like that. So you can layer these over the top of, the, top of each other. You gotta play with it a little bit, uh, but it'll save you some real estate and then save your layout. And you'll have it really compact and tight. And I just keep this off on another screen because everything's on float. But that's it. That's what I used to trade. This is my current layout. It's not exactly like the honest review of Fidelity layout. Uh, I was transitioning, but I like the way this is set up because my mouse doesn't have to travel far, nor do my eyes. I'm usually like right in here. So with that, I'll leave it to you guys. Let me know what you think. I'm curious, if you guys have any other suggestions or how I could do something better, please throw it in the comments below. I really appreciate all the feedback on all the videos. You guys have been great and it's fun to really help people out. It's been awesome. But with that, I will see you next time. Good luck out there and as always, protect your profits. Thanks guys.